Acetabular fracture, Wikipedia article audio. Fractures of the acetabulum occur when the head of the femur is driven into the pelvis. This injury is caused by a blow to either the side or front of the knee and often occurs as a dashboard injury accompanied by a fracture of the femur. The acetabulum is a cavity situated on the outer surface of the hip bone, also called the coxal bone or innominate bone. It is made up of three bones, the ilium, ischium, and pubis. Together, the acetabulum and head of the femur form the hip joint. Anatomy Patterns of Fracture Fractures of the acetabulum in young individuals usually result from a high-energy injury like vehicular accident or feet first fall. In older individuals or those with osteoporosis, a trivial fall may result in acetabular fracture. In 1964, French surgeons Robert Judet, Jean Judet, and Emile Latournal first described the mechanism, classification, and treatment of acetabular fracture. They classified these fractures into elementary and associated fractures. To understand the fracture pattern of a fractured acetabulum, it is essential to have minimum three X-ray views though use of CT scan with 3D reconstruction of images has made understanding of these fractures easier. Tiles classification of acetabular fracture This fracture may be associated with fracture through the posterior wall as well, making it more complex. Typically occurs when the injuring force is applied from the side, against the greater trochanter of the femur bone, as in a fall on the side or being hit on the side. This force may be combined with dashboard injury as well. Fracture is best seen in antero-posterior view and iliac and obturator oblique views. Judith Latournal Classification Posterior column with posterior wall fracture occurs due to dashboard injury. Antero-posterior view may give clue to these injuries, Judith views, and CT scan help in knowing the extent of injury. Occurs due to combined dashboard injury and direct injury to the hip from the side. Gallery Typically caused by a combination of forces acting on the hip though the femoral head. All three X-ray views plus CT scan is a must for diagnosis and management of this complex injury. In this injury, non-operative treatment rarely gives satisfactory results. Surgical management is ideal. The choice of approach rests with the surgeon, but going from front, or anterior approach is must. The posterior injury may be tacked with anterior approach by experienced surgeon. If the patient is unfit to undergo major surgery due to any reason, longitudinal traction to achieve secondary congruence of hip may help to restore hip function, though partially. In this variety of fracture, the innominate bone is broken such that the upper part consists of ilium with weight-bearing dome and the lower part consists of ischium and pubic bones. It typically occurs when the injuring force is applied from the side, against the greater trochanter of the femur bone, as in a fall on the side or being hit on the side. This is a two-part fracture, but though both columns are broken, it is not a true both-column fracture as the weight-bearing dome is still attached to main ilium. Depending on the level at which the fracture line passes in relation to weight-bearing area, the transverse fracture is further subdivided into types. Elementary Fractures X-ray visualization is best done in antero-posterior view and iliac and obturator oblique views. In CT scan the characteristic feature is that the fracture line runs from front to back. CT scan also helps in identifying impaction of bone pieces and if there are pieces in the joint. Associated Fractures 
All three X-ray views plus CT scan is a must for diagnosis and management of this complex injury. Diagnosis and Treatment Like any other acetabular fracture, if the femoral head is dislocated out of the socket, early reduction into socket is a priority. However, in this injury, non-operative treatment rarely gives satisfactory results. Surgical management is ideal. The choice of approach rests with the surgeon, but going from front, or anterior approach is must. The posterior injury may be tacked with anterior approach by experienced surgeon. If the patient is unfit to undergo major surgery due to any reason, longitudinal traction to achieve secondary congruence of hip may help to restore hip function, though partially. Ideal X-ray visualization of an elementary fracture will depend on the fracture type. Diagnosis in all cases, CT scan can assist in identifying impacted bone pieces, which may be found within the joint, and MRI may be done to identify the extent of potential injury to the sciatic nerve. The broken bone pieces or the dislocated head of the femur may injure the sciatic nerve, causing paralysis of the foot, the patient may or may not recover sensation in the foot depending on the extent of injury to the nerve. The posterior wall fragment may be one large piece, or multiple pieces, and may be associated with impaction of the bone. Sciatic nerve injury and stoppage of blood supply to femoral head at the time of accident or during surgery to treat may occur. Deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism are other complications that may occur in any type of injury to the acetabulum. If the femur head is dislocated, it should be reduced as soon as possible, to prevent damage to its blood supply. This is preferably done under anesthesia, following which, leg is kept pulled by applying traction to prevent joint from dislocating. The final management depends on the size of the fragment, stability, and congruence of the joint. In some cases traction for 6 to 8 weeks may be the only treatment required, however, surgical fixation using screw and plate may be required if the injury is more complex. The latter treatment will be called for if bone fragments do not fall into place, or if they are found in the joint or if the joint itself is unstable. Depending on the stability achieved via initial treatment, the patient may be allowed to stand and walk with help of support within about 6 to 8 weeks. Full function may return in about 3 months. Associated Injuries and Complications At the site of injury, after stabilizing an injured person and resuscitation, Quick examination is done to check injury to vital organs. Treatment If one suspects injury to the hip, it is imperative to immobilize the limb using some kind of support to prevent movements of the injured limb to prevent further damage. I. Simple fracture, anterior or posterior wall column, 2. Transverse fracture, 3. T type fracture involving two columns, 4, both columns fractures, floating acetabulum. A trained paramedic may be able to diagnose hip dislocation by noticing the position of the injured limb. It is essential to document status of nerves and vessels before starting any treatment to protect oneself from litigation. On arrival at the hospital, Trained trauma surgeon will assess the patient and prescribe necessary tests including X-rays as described earlier. Posterior wall fracture, iliac oblique and obturator oblique views, posterior column fracture, iliac oblique and obturator oblique views, anterior wall fracture, iliac oblique view, anterior column fracture, obturator oblique view.
Non-surgical management consists of reducing the dislocated joint by maneuver under anesthesia and applying traction to the limb to maintain position of joint and fractured bones. If non-surgical management is preferred it may require 6 weeks to 3 months for recovery. Post-surgery treatment and prognosis Principles of management Surgical management the surgical management requires high degree of training and well-equipped center. It should be carried out by experienced surgical team to get best results. The principles laid down for management are Anatomic reduction of the fractured fragments, stable fixation, congruent joint, early mobilization, delayed weight bearing. Innominate bone is a flat bone with many curves. In most part the bone is thick enough and has broad surfaces that are amenable to primary fixation using lag screw and to neutralize forces across the bone one needs to add plate on the surface of the fractured fragments for it to heal without deformity. Before surgery, patient needs tests to check fitness for surgery. Anesthesia the surgery may be performed either under regional anesthesia or general anesthesia. Kocher-Langenbeck approach for posterior injuries, ili inguinal, iliofemoral of modified stoppas approach for anterior or combined injuries. Surgical approaches. Following are the common approaches. Implants. Normally lag screws and reconstruction plates are preferred implants. Post-operative management, would involve initial period or bed rest, followed by mobilization by trained therapist. Total time to recover may be up to three months. <laughs>